summer, right? This was the first summer I wasn't able to do that because I had or the, this past summer going into last season was the first summer that I wasn't able to do that because I had shoulder surgery. Mm -hmm. So I missed a whole summer of training. And so when I came back, the team was already, you know what I mean, rolling. rolling. They already rolling. got, you know what I mean? We started off okay, but we didn't start off as well as we wanted to. But I feel like they already had a little chemistry going. And so when I came into the mix, I'm – I missed a whole like I missed that time in the summer of playing pickup ball, hooping, getting a rhythm, getting a mm -hmm. flow, working on my game. The timing right. The timing right. So when I came back into the league and started playing again, it, I just felt off. Like I didn't mm -hmm. feel like a a part of the team. And then you know the way I was being used, I felt like I was you know Doc was trying to play me as like a a Ray Allen or like a JJ mm -hmm. Redick, like all pin downs, all like. I can do game. it, but that ain't my game, right? right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I need some flow. I need some mixes of, of pick and rolls. I need some post ups. All that. Just different touches, you know what I mean? And so it it, it was just, you know, that last season was just hard uh, overall. Uh, but I think for this year, everybody's starting off on, on a healthy page. We're starting off on the same page. Me and Kawhi are going to get some time together working out. Um, I think everything is, is just not rushed going into this season. Mm -hmm. I felt last year everything was kind of rushed. I think rushed. it happened for a reason. I think y'all going to benefit from that because mm -hmm. going through the wars and the struggles and the ups and downs I went through in the bubble, now y'all coming out to start again with a new coach, with a fresher minded coach, with a guy who probably y'all probably could communicate more with because mm -hmm. he more close to our age. And we right. kind of, you know what I'm saying? We come from that same era. But at this, I, I think y'all benefit from those those hard times that y'all come together more this year because y'all starting from scratch. Right. Being in training camp together, it makes a big difference, bro. Right. It makes a big difference for a team going together. And once y'all get that, I think y'all be fine. Right, right. And I just think the understanding, I mean, you got to think for the first time, the Clippers were picked to win a championship. When was the last time you ever heard that? Right. Never. You know what I mean? yeah. So a lot of added pressure on that. And then, like you said, not being able to gain that chemistry from the jump. Mm -hmm. And people can say what they want. Chemistry is the key matters. to winning it championships. It I don't give a fuck what nobody says. Chemistry's got to be there, right. you know, at least while you're playing. And uh, to not have that was tough, you know. But I was someone who picked you guys. I, I think you, I mm -hmm. thought you guys were built to beat who we thought was going to be in the West Finals, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you felt the same mm -hmm. way. How tough was it going in and, and, and having that lead on Denver and then seeing them walk y'all down and, and walk y'all out pretty much? Yeah, it was, it was tough because, uh, like, you know, we was confident. We felt like, you know, we was – we went up 3-1. Uh, we felt like – you know, we're going to win the next one. We lost. We like, cool. We up 3-2. We're going to win the next one. We lost. <laughs> but during that during that whole process, like, we, we never worked on adjustments. We never mm -hmm. worked on what to do differently. Mm -hmm. um, we just literally having the same shit happen over and over again. So it, was, it, it, it started to play a trick on you. Like, man, like, what's going on? Like, you know what I mean? We talking amongst each other. Like, the conversations is like, no, nah, we're going to be all right. The conversation should have been like, nah, we need to this change we this. Do. Yeah, mm -hmm. we need to switch this up. We need so it it we we wasn't like at the end of the day, I don't I don't think we deserved it. We wasn't prepared enough going into it. Just us making an adjustment standpoint. Uh we what we wasn't prepared. We didn't put the work into it. It was kind of just like, yo, we got PG, we got Quad, we got Lou, Lou Trez. Trez. Yeah. Like we we gonna be straight. We gonna figure it out. All that shit on paper looks good. It but looks like we good, said, but man, it's man, that you know, like and and I and I related to like we didn't practice during the, the whole year, and it's that's hard to do when you putting a fresh new, new group of guys. Together, together, yes, right? sir. Because the problems you have during games, He's those shits can get ironed out in practice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're going to bump heads in practice, but mm -hmm. you're going to come out of that practice like, Better and okay, it. I understand this dude. I, mm -hmm. I know where he's coming from. When it happened during games, it's, it's going to rub a little differently. Because hard to come back from that doing it. It's hard to come yeah. back from that, especially in the playoffs. The heat of the moment. Yeah. Right, right. And you're like, well, okay, this is, that's what he on. So, all right, I got mm -hmm. you. And that's just kind of how the how how the team, you know what I mean? That's just kind of how we was, how how we went about it after stuff start, you know, unfolding and mm -hmm. unraveling. In blank happen over and over again. It started to play a trick on you like, man, what's going on? So they run it back obviously with Paul, with Kawhi, with a coach that I think a lot of people would have loved to have hired this off season. I know you said they made no moves, but considering Key has always said, and you've said even just weeks ago, before the Lakers made all the moves, you still would like to see the Lakers run through somebody like the Clippers with the way that they have ascended. Where do you see LA right now within hearing these particular comments, knowing the guy that was in charge of these, the lack of adjustments, he's out. Well, I mean, we, we talked about that. 
he remember when we were going through this whole thing about the Clippers, and I was like, man, this feels like a coup. It feels like somebody internally just didn't want Doc Rivers to be there. Right? We were wondering, you know, look, whenever a guy like Doc Rivers is removed from a team, regardless if they didn't meet expectations, that's coming from the best players to a degree, right? I mean, Steve Ballmer can say, hey, I want to fire Doc Rivers, but at the end of the day, Steve Ballmer has to consult. Not that he has to consult. That's the wrong choice of word. He has to communicate that to Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, if those guys are your best players and they own the keys to your franchise. That's why I said, you know, it's – it's because of them that he's no longer there, too. And Paul George is just kind of reiterating that by saying, hey, they're trying to use me like a Ray Allen. They're trying to use me like a J.J. Redick. Pin downs, coming off screens. His game is way more diverse than that. You can use him you know, back against the basket, posting up in uh, pick and roll scenarios because he can do that all. The question is, though, losing Montrez Harrell really hurts them. And they, they just didn't add anything in free agency, and I think that hurts them ultimately. Let, let, me, let me ask you this, Jason. Um why say something now that Doc Rivers is gone? Why, because he is gone. Why not address it at the time that it's happening with Doc Rivers at halftime and stuff like that? Why not like address it then? That's why we were talking about this before, Key, where I was like, man, I wish a guy like CP3 was on this team. Mm -hmm. Because, and I don't know this for a fact, maybe it was addressed, but it, it, Kawhi doesn't really talk a lot. Right? That's never been his thing. He hasn't been as communicative. He's a quiet leader. What I've seen by Paul, you know, what he said in this whole thing is that, hey, you know, we were up 3-1, then we lost, it was 3-2, and we're like, all right, we'll be fine. Then it was 3-3, three, three, we're like, all right, we'll be fine, we still won one game. And then it was, you know, all of a sudden, well, we need to make some changes. Somebody in the locker room needs to be like, no, Doc, we need to make changes. Somebody needs to stand up and say that, and I think ultimately – their lack of leadership and nobody to address that with Doc is ultimately what led to their demise. So when you're when you're up three one and a team runs off three straight victories to get you, in that entire stretch, you mean to tell me that the coaching staff, as well as Patrick Beverly, I'll just use him as an example, didn't address the lack of adjustments? Is that that, that and, and I didn't yeah. play? I've never been in an NBA locker room as a player, so I don't know how that would go over. I know in an NFL locker room, if if the adjustments aren't being made, we're certainly going to let the coaches know, like, "Yo, this dude is playing me this way. We need to go to this. This ain't working. What are y'all doing?" And, and so it's it, hearing you or listening to Paul George talk about the lack of adjustments from a veteran coach who's won a championship and veteran players that are on teams and guys like Sam Cassell who's on the bench and Ty Lue who's there, just let that just go? Hmm. No, you're right. I mean, look, it's it's his word. Nobody else is really saying anything. No, I'm not questioning his word. I'm just saying it's like, it just it's it's I guess it's baffling and mind-boggling to a degree, right? You would think that. Veteran players that have won championships, whether Kawhi doesn't, you don't need to scream loud to, to say, hey, Jay, man, we need to make some adjustments, dog. Uh, look, you bring up a valid point. I, 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 I wasn't in the locker room. I, I, I don't know what happened. This is Paul George saying these words. I would find it shocking that a guy like Doc Rivers, Ty Lue, That's Sam Cassell, saying. Wouldn't make those adjustments. Yeah, or even be able to see why we are losing these games or why the first half is going one way or the third quarter is going one way and not be able to make the adjustments. But it, there was a part of what Paul George said, though, that I got because we all felt this way. And if we felt this way, I'm sure internally with inside their organization, they felt this way. You didn't think Denver was really going to beat the Clippers. No, I didn't. Right? Nobody thought that. You're like, all right, it's a matter of time before Kawhi turns it on. It's a matter of time before PG. Oh, Lou Will, he, you know, he dropping buckets on people. Montrez, it's a matter of time. So I, I think that was maybe also a part of the problem, that they never thought it could actually happen. They didn't have that sense of urgency. They didn't have that dog in them as much as they thought but they when did. It, but when it gets to 3-2, it's a uh oh I'm right. I mean, it should be. You would think. Yeah, it should be like a uh oh <laughs> uh, Like, wait a minute, man. This ain't right. You know, that that's kind of in football because you don't play a whole series. You get basically your series is your quarter. And you look up in your first and second quarter, you kicking butt. 
your third quarter coming, somebody making a comeback. Now all of a sudden you go, yo, we need to change this in the fourth quarter. All I'm going to say is every time Kawhi Leonard has won a championship, he hasn't been, he's been the guy that got finals MVP multiple times, but he hasn't been the leader of the team. Like Tim Duncan, Tony Robinson, um, Tony Parker, excuse me, leaders of the San Antonio Spurs. That would be Spurs. a good player, Tony Robinson. Tony Robinson, <laughs> leader. He was a guy I actually competed against in high school. He went to UConn and I didn't. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's funny how you remember things like that. T. Robinson, respect to you. But he wasn't the guy in San Antonio, right? Like leadership-wise, that was Tony Parker, Mono Ginobili, uh, Tim Duncan. Then you go to Toronto, like that was Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry is the leader of that team. Fred Van Vliet, tough guy as well. He made big shots. But like communicative wise, leadership wise, that was him. And now you come to the Clippers. Like, who is that guy? Like, who was a guy grabbing so, people in so, the huddle saying, "Nah, you ain't gonna do it so, this way." So who's the leader now? If they, that, if they, that's always been a question. That's why I thought they needed a guy like CP3. I I still don't know who the leader of the Clippers is. The are right vo- now. Is the voice? Uh, scratch that. Ty Lue. Scratch that. Is the leader Ty Lue and the voice Ty Lue now? It has to be. I mean, unless Paul George. Continues to step up and say, "This is my team." Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. Understanding personality traits, who the leader is in the locker room. I, I see how Pat Bev talks to everybody, but I don't know. Does he lead them? Uh, he annoys I, me. I like him. Well, that's buddy. what I'm saying. Like I know Dame <laughs> leads the Portland Trailblazers. I know LeBron leads the Lakers. I know Jamal Murray and Jokic lead the Denver Nuggets. I don't know who leads. The Los Angeles Clippers. I would love I to play with Patrick Beverly, just not against him because he would make me mad. Two quick things I would just mention just from the fan perspective. I would never think it would be Paul George's team as long as Kawhi Leonard is on the roster. That's just from a fan perspective. And also, this is a Waterloo season for the Clippers. Remember, if this thing doesn't work out, it doesn't blow up, these guys can just walk out the door. And everything the Clippers did to acquire these two guys, it could be over at but the end of the